kutoka kwa Mungu kwa sababu ako na jambo na wewe. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's pray for our children as they go to their classes. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to give you glory and honor this morning. Thank you for your mercy that are on you today. Thank you for your love that is from everlasting to everlasting. We want to thank you for our children that you have given to us as a gift as we release them to go to their classes this morning. May the grace of God be sufficient upon them. May the anointing of the Spirit of God rest upon them. May the favor that from above be their portion today. Bless them this morning. And as we continue in the service, Father, may your grace be sufficient upon us as we share your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Basta pigie, watoto tuma kofi, wanapo toka taratibu. Taratibu, taratibu, taratibu. And the Lord is going to bless us. Tunaweza kuka. Kalide, please, naomba umisaidia tu. So that we move together. I think uh, allow us to use English and Swahili for today. And God is going to bless us this morning. And then, where we can use Kiswahili, we shall be doing so. Uh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Greet your neighbor, tell him all how welcome to the house of God. Welcome to the fellowship of the Oasis of Anointing. I'm happy to be your neighbor. You know, people are not speaking. Tell your neighbor, I'm happy to be your neighbor. I'm glad you are my neighbor. In case I try to sleep, make sure you are my neighbor. Uh huh. In case I don't clap, force me to do so. In case I don't clap, make, make sure, you know, you know, keep me moving and the, the Lord is going to bless us. You know, in the house of God, things are supposed to be lively. Nothing is supposed to be boring. You know, the singing is supposed to be lively, the clapping is supposed to be lively, the walking, you know, in all those kind of things. Amen. Amen. Now let's uh, turn our books to the book of Joel chapter 2. And we'll read other scriptures along. Joel chapter 2 and verse number 28. Amen. Not John, Joel, Joel, J O E. Joel, yes. See John, Joel. Joel chapter two, and verse number twenty-eight. Let's begin from there. Okay, and it shall come to pass that afterward, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall not shall, shall, okay, shall see visions. I'm not from Nyanza to say shall. Huh? You are young men are going to see visions. God bless his word. Now, this morning, I want to share with you about speaking the word of God in a prophetic manner. Or what we can say, prophetic speaking. Ama kwa kinabi. Speaking the word of God that has the spirit of God in it. Because it is possible to speak the word of God without the spirit of God. Because what we call speaking prophetically is speaking the word of God within the anointing of the Spirit of God. That you yourself, you are filled with the Spirit of God 
Na kwamba wewe mwenyewe umejazwa na Roho Mtakatifu. You are filled the Holy Spirit within yourself. Wewe mwenyewe umejazwa na Roho Mtakatifu. And the word of God dwells in you. Na neno la Bwana linakaa ndani yako. And I'm very sure a good number of you have been to high school. Na nina ukweli ya kwamba wengi wenu umeshakuwa katika shule ya upili. Yes, and you did something to do with this a solute a solvent and a solution na basi safari hizo zingine zote asolute okay a solute a solvent and a solution isn't it a solution is a combination of the solvent and the solute eh? so that there is the water there is the salt you combine and make one thing that you can drink and then say this is a good drink eh? now when we talk about a solution we are talking about a combination of God's word and the spirit of God within a man tunapongea kuhusu jawabu ni ule kushika ama solution ama ule mchanganyiko na mchanganyiko si ndio mchanganyiko mkorogo sema mkorogo si ndio ile unakorogo you know that Yes. Now we have the word of God. We have the spirit of God. Combined together. Now that becomes a solution. And now it is put in you. And when you speak that one. Now you say I am speaking prophetically. You know people have a habit of reading the word of God and merely saying they are speaking the word of God and they say they are speaking prophetically now the proper dimension of speaking prophetically is speaking the word of God within the action or within the power of the spirit of God because God has not given the people his word to speak it carelessly without any intention without any purpose but he has desired the people to be born again they are filled with the Holy Spirit. They read the word of God. Believe the word of God. And then the spirit of God comes upon his word and proceeds out of your mouth. And you shall say, I am a prophet of God. I am speaking prophetically because I am speaking a combination of God's word and the spirit of God together and John says in the last days keep, keep that scripture there so that we can be reading it now and then the people the students every come after that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy now, why will they prophesy because my spirit is upon them and my word is in their hearts as, as a result of the word and the spirit together I will give your sons and daughters the power to prophesy the Bible says in the book of Acts you will stay up in Jerusalem and the spirit of God is going to come upon you and that you are going to receive power and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem in Judea in Samaria and all the parts of the world you will stay in Jerusalem I have given you my word but after I have given you my word 
lakini baada ya nyinyi mimi kuwapatia neno langu hold my word shikilieni neno langu and keep that word muliweke hilo neno but wait in jerusalem kaeni hapo hapo yerusalemu so that i pour my spirit upon you ili ya kwamba nitakapomwaga roho wangu juu yenu and the word that i have given you na hilo neno ambalo nimeshapatia stop just speak my word halita litaacha kuwa tu neno langu tu shall be my word lakini itakuwa neno langu it shall so become prophetic word itakuwa neno la kinabii and when you go to jerusalem na mkienda yerusalemu and speak the word of god to the people of jerusalem muongee neno la bwana katika huko yerusalemu you will be different from the scribes and the pharisees hiyo itatofautisha na na waandishi na mafarisayo because the scribes and the pharisees maana waandishi na mafarisayo they are also speaking the same word maana pia nao wanaongea neno hilo hilo but they are merely reciting the word lakini wao wanalikariri tu they are merely saying the word wao tu wanalikariri but it shall not be so with you lakini haitakuwa hivyo kwenu when the spirit of god shall come upon you roho wa bwana ajapo juu yenu you will cease to be some who just merely reciting the word of god taacha kuwa watu tu wa kunikariri neno la bwana and merely speaking the word after another na kuongea tu neno mstari baada ya mwingine you know i told you when i was growing up niliambia nilipokuwa nikikua and we were nearly to go to form 1 na tulikuwa tunaenda huko kidato cha kwanza and the, our headmaster was, was also in charge of the church around there basi mwalimu wetu mkuu alikuwa pia ni mmoja wapo msimamizi wa kanisa moja and one day he just he just came to class with a kid alipokuja kadarasa na kiboko and said all the boys here who are that in years and above akasema kwamba wale vijana wote wenye miaka 13 na kuendelea follow me wanifuate and we followed him na tukamfuata and he took us to a class basi akatuchukua kwa darasa and he said i have discovered you are just about to go to form 1 akasema kwamba nimetambua ya kwamba mko karibu kwenda kidato cha kwanza. you have not been confirmed. Na nyinyi bado hamjawekelewa mikono. So this is what we are going to do. Hivi ndivyo basi mtakavyofanya. I'm going to take you through classes for one hour. Naenda kuachukua kwa darasa kwa lisali moja. And then on Sunday, alafu basi Jumapili, you shall be confirmed. Basi mtawekelewa mikono. And then you shall qualify to take the whole communion. Basi mtastahimili kula meza ya bwana. And you shall become good Christians basi mtakuwa wa Kristo because the other week shall be doing exams maana huo hiyo wiki nyingine mtakuwa mnaketia mtihani and we are given the apostles creed basi tukapatiwa ile imani ya mitume asante makaridio ya mitume imani ya mitume kwa kaliri the apostles creed i don't know how they explain but he said and he stood there with a the cane akasimama na kiboko and said say after me akasema semeni nyuma yangu you know how we used to say it you know sasa unasema akiru nimeamini Yesu bwana na 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 kufuka kwa Yesu yote unasema yote and then you, you repeat again and again and again basi utakariri na kukariri na kukariri hiyo imani ya mitume and because of the fear of the king na kwa sababu ya hofu ya kiboko within the hours baada ya masaa matatu we had mastered the apostles creed tulikuwa tumeiweka ndani hiyo imani ya mitume kabisa and then we had also mastered the lord's prayer pia tukawa tumei tumeishika hiyo ombi la Bwana. And when we went to church on Sunday, tulipoenda Jumapili kanisani, we were paraded before the whole church. Tuliwekwa mbele ya kila kanisa wote kanisani. By the sight of the priest of the headmaster, you will not forget even one word. Na kwa sababu ya ile hofu ya mwalimu mkuu wa shule aliyeweza kusahau neno. We said the apostles did so well. Tulisema likariri vizuri sana and the person in charge was very happy and laid hands on us and said now you have qualified and we were also very happy and after the church we said him we have overcome the threat of our headmaster na mchungaji wa kanisa hilo wakati huo akatuwekelea mkono wakiwa amefurahi akasema kwamba sasa basi nyinyi tunawapokea finish and then after the service we celebrated We have defeated the wrath of the principal of the pied master and then we are back to our ordinary life. Basi baada ibada tukasherejea tukasema kwamba tumemshinda ile headmaster wetu na basi tukarudia maisha yetu ile ya kawaida. Those who are liars they continue to be liars. Yokuwa uongo wakaendelea na uongo wao. Those who are still in sugar they continue to do the same. Waliokuwa na sukari wanaiba sukari waliendelea kufanya hivyo. Because we recited the word maana tulikariri neno the power of god in that word bila kuwa na nguvu ya 
were made just like Chinua, Achebe and the rest of the people speaking the word of God minus the power of God in that word and in order in fact the Bible says in the latter days there is going to come a kind of a church that has a form of godliness but has no power of God in it that we preach the Bible that we preach the word of God that we preach from Genesis to Revelation that we preach it with precision and accuracy that we preach it with very clear understanding but minus the power of God that works in that word because they have not allowed the spirit of God to work in their lives they have allowed themselves to read the word of God they have allowed themselves even to serve in the ministry they have no problem in giving offerings they have no problem in singing in the choir they have no problem in becoming an elder that's not an issue but they have a problem with the spirit of God because and then they keep reading the word of God and they continue reciting the word of God you know there was a man who was told by the bishop that he used he used to preach about baptism all the time and the church knew this man preaches baptism all the time so the elders decided to give him the book of Matthew that talks about the genealogy and so, so, and so, so and so begotten so and so, and so so they were wondering where the baptism is going to come from so they knew they had cornered him but this man preached very well and in the conclusion he asked I wonder whether these people were baptized you know, you preaching the word of God and speaking about it but without the spirit of God it becomes yes the word of God but doesn't do what it was intended to do because in the Old Testament people are reading the word of God all over the walls and reciting and reciting and reciting but the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter number 8 and chapter number 9 I am bringing a better and a new covenant different from the Old Testament I will write my word in their heart the word of God was written in scribes it was written in places where you could read but he said I will write my word in the hearts of the people there is no book that exists in your heart it is your spirit that lives in your heart and only a spirit can write on top of a spirit no wonder he said in John chapter number 4 a time is coming and now is that the worshippers of God will worship God in truth and in the spirit so that the spirit of God can write this word in your heart and make a solution and make a solution 
speak that word with your mouth. We say you are prophetically speaking. You are speaking under the anointing of the Spirit of God. John chapter number 6 and verse number 63. The Bible says it is the spirit that quickens but the, the flesh profited nothing. Now the word English that is used in English quicken doesn't mean making fast. And it means to give life into that word. It is life to whatever it is upon. When the Spirit of God comes upon the word, now the word ceases to be alphabetical arrangements. You know the word of God as it is written. It has got nouns, verbs, adjectives, pronouns. You know that ordinary English that we read in school. But when the Spirit of God comes upon that one, it ceases to be an ordinary English and becomes something else. Please encourage me by saying Amen. Encourage me much more by saying Amen. I tell you, neighbor, you need the Spirit of God. You cannot afford to be a believer minus the Spirit of God. Otherwise, you may become a scribe. Knowing a lot of word of God. And knowing a lot of scriptures. But minus the power of that word. Knowing very well all the lessons of driving. And you cannot drive even a motorcycle. You know the rules of the game. Look at the, look at the referees that you see. And set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. Let's stop there. Because you know the scripture, the Bible says that, and the place was full of dry bones. Another version says that they were not just dry, it says they were dry. Indeed, they were very dry. And they were scattered all over. Living a meaningless life. And a life without a hope. And a life without expectation. Have you seen a situation in life and you wonder whether there can be a solution? Let me see whether I'm around. Have you ever had a problem until you feel... you? you you have exhausted all the solutions. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It, it, like it, it is not possible. Until when, when somebody comes to give you an idea, what the hell is Somebody comes tell you, can you try this? But you, you in your heart, you know, you are, you are nodding your head, yes. But internally, you are saying, even that one, I have tried, but it never worked. Now, look at the connection. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me within the dry bones. And he can say, is it possible for these bones to live? Yes. Is it possible for the bones to live? Yes. Now the Bible says, and the Lord says, prophesy. He never said speak. He said prophesy. Because there is speaking and a prophesying. Now, I want you to 
Bwana alinulizia swali je mifupa hii inaweza ishi tena nikamwambia kwamba wewe bwana wajua and the lord said wewe bwana unajua and the lord said what nikamwambia itabirie mifupa hii now prophesy he never said speak hakumwambia kuiambia iongee he said prophesy akamwambia itabirie now what does he say speak, speak a solution of my word with my spirit anamwambia ongea neno langu likiwa limekorogwa na roho mtakatifu my word neno langu and my spirit likiwa limeshikana na roho mtakatifu put them together zishikanishe pamoja and speak to the bones na uongeleshe hivyo because if you speak your word maana ukiongea neno lako i am not sure whether your word can change sina ukweli kama neno lako litabadilisha maybe your hali. word can continue to scatter maana neno lako linaweza endelea kutawanya mifupa but i'm very sure lakini nina ukweli and i know very well na najua because the bible says first peter chapter 1 and verse number 23 maana maandiko inasema kitabu cha waraka wa kwanza wa petero mstari mlango wa kwanza mstari wa 23 we are born again maana tumezaliwa mara nyingine by a corruptible word sio kwa mbegu inayochaka but uh, we are born again lakini tumezaliwa mara nyingine by an incorruptible word kwa mbegu isiyoweza kuchaka now, what is an corruptible word je ni neno gani inamaanishaje neno lisilo chaka ni neno lisiloweza kukufa and miss a word that cannot decay ni neno ambalo aliwezi kuoza and miss a word that cannot rot ni neno ambalo aliwezi kuoza and na kunuka peter is saying na petero anasema we are born again tumezaliwa mara nyingine by that word kwa hilo neno which has a power of life ambalo lina uwezo wa uzima which cannot die ambayo haiwezi kukufa now with the spirit of god sasa na roho wa bwana akiwa this word that cannot decay hili neno ambalo haliwezi kuoza spirit of god upon it roho mtakatifu akiwa juu we yake bring the bones back to the living litaleta mifupa ikaweze kuwa hai bwana msemi amen bwana eh bwana sema ni amen hata kama hakuna point tunasema hiyo hata kama hata kama ilikuwa jana ni amen sema amen eh ah huh? we are born again tumezaliwa mara tena by a word that cannot decay kwa neno ambalo haliwezi kuoza a word that has life in itself neno ambalo lina uzima ndani yake ezekiel na anamwambia ezekiel prophesy that word tabiria hii mifupa speak that word Nena hilo neno and the bones that you see here na mifupa unayoiona hapo and the bones without form mifupa ambayo haina namna it is going to have form inaenda kuwa na namna and you have read that scripture again and again na tumesoma haya maandiko mara and nyingine na nyingine began to speak na maandiko inasema Ezekiel alipoanza kuinena alipoanza kutabiri and prophesied alipoendelea kutabiri and the bones came together mifupa ilianza kurudiana the tendons came together mifupa ikaanza kushikana and the flesh came together nyama zikarudi kwa hiyo mfupa stood a man ikasimama mtu and the bible says na biblia inasema and god sent his wind mungu akatuma upepo wake and the man became a living man mtu huyo akawa mtu ambaye ana uhai where did the journey began je safari ilianzia wapi i was in the lord nilikuwa katika bwana in his spirit katika roho wake and by his spirit na katika huyo roho wake i have spoken his word nimeongea hilo neno lake and because i have spoken his word na kwa sababu nimelinena neno lake the hope that had been wasted away tumaini ambalo lilikuwa limepotea and the hope that had eroded away tumaini lilokuwa limepotea things begin to work mambo yameanza kutendeka things begin to move mambo yameanza kutendeka is there anybody bored with a plateau je kuna mtu ambaye ametosheka na hali moja ya maisha ambayo imeendelea no. bila kubadilika kuboeka is there anybody who is bored with a plateau plateau you know you know you are just standing around and you find things the same way plateau ni kusimama tu unakaa na unaona mambo yabadiliki anakaa hivi mwaka nenda mwaka rudi you know i have told you about a man who was my teacher my fellow teacher in high school hapa boy, boy, boy high school nimewaambia kwamba kulikuwa na mwalimu ambaye alikuwa tunafundisha na yeye hapa boy and this man was a total drunkard huyu mtu alikuwa ni mlevi kupindukia that is the, one of the drunkards i have seen he could have been given a trophy by kenya breweries huyo ndiye mmoja wapo wale walevi nishai kuona ambao angepewa 
zawadi na watu wa this man was tengeneza pombe drinking until the money is over huyu mtu angelewa mpaka pesa ziishe that's when he come back to school ndio arudi kwa shule so and i used to preach to this man mtu huyu nilikuwa namhubiria then nothing much was working hakuna kitu kilikuwa kinafanyika so we teamed up with mrs gige you you know her tukashikana na mrs gige ambaye mnamfahamu we were not even feeling for this soul to go to heaven hata hatukuwa tunamhurumia atia kwamba asikose mbingu we were feeling this guy can die tulikuwa tunaona anaweza kufa because of drinking kwa sababu ya kulewa and we started to begin to pray because he was not the only drunkard the school was full of drunkards a good number half the half the staff room men were drunkard quarter of the women were drunkards you know ni shule inakaa kama poli shema amen wakati huo not today watu walikuwa ni wengi tu walikuwa na kunywa when we began to pray tulipoanza kuomba we were consulting one another tulikuwa tunaulizana mmoja na mwingine what is the spirit of god saying Roho wa Bwana anenena nini about this man? Kusiana na huyu mtu. What is the spirit of God saying about this man? Roho wa Bwana anasemaje kusiana na huyu mtu? And we all had the same understanding. Sote tulikuwa na ufahamu wa sawa. We speak to this man. Ya kwamba tutamuongelesha mtu huyu. And the prophesy over his life. Ya kwamba tumtabirie maisha yake. And the prophesy over his destiny. Tumtabirie hatima yake. And I became a friend of this man. Nikawa rafiki wa huyu mtu. You know and I would make sure when I come to the staff room. Na nikahakikisha ninapokuja katika mahali pa kutania. I used to arrive before him. Nilikuwa nakuja mbele yake. Mbona nipatie hiyo kiti? Hiyo hiyo ili watu waone. You know I used to arrive be, 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 before him very early in the morning and I knew where he used to sit. So Nilikuwa. I would go to where he used to sit and I sit on the chair. Nilikuwa narauka asubuhi naenda najua mahali ambapo huwa na kiti na naenda na kiti hiyo. Before he comes. Kabla hajakuja. And I would prophesy over his life. Na ningetabiri kusiana na maisha yake. You know I had heard the preaching in the church about the mercy seat. Maana nilisikia mahubiri hapa kanisani kusiana na In the name of rehema. Jesus I declare this one also a mercy seat that yeah. when this guy comes here and sits on this chair he will hear and feel the mercies of God. Kwa jina la Bwana ninatangaza ya kwamba hiki kiti kitakuwa kiti cha rehema. If you don't have mercy apata rehema. If you don't have mercy over this man bana usipo mrehemu mtu huyu this man is going to die of drunkenness huyu mtu atakufa na ulevi and because you have said we prophesy over his destiny na kwa sababu umesema tutatabiria hata yake i prophesy every morning nitatabiri kila asubuhi and i will make sure i sit on that chair na nitahakikisha kwamba nimeketi kwa hiyo so that nobody else is going to sit on it once i come out i will come out when i see him coming so that he comes here and he sits so that nobody else interferes with those words and itahakikisha kwamba hakuna mtu mwingine atakuja kuketia kiti hicho na kuchanganya hayo maneno ya kwamba nitakapoondoka yeye tu atakaye kiti and i continue and I, i saw nothing much was changing this man is still hivyo nikaona kwamba hakuna kitu kinafanyika this man is still drinking so huyu anaendelea kulewa so one morning i i met him at toto asubuhi moja tukakutania huko totali he is climbing to town in the morning anakuja hapa mjini asubuhi wearing a suit and a tie akiwa amevaa suti na tie he drank yesternight akiwa amelewa usiku huo and now he was going in the morning for another drink na hivyo alikuwa anaenda asubuhi kwa nyingine so i told him my, my friend kamwambia rafiki yeye drink up to 10 kunywa mpaka saa sa, sa, nne come to school alafu kuje kanisani because to, today maana leo hii i will take lunch in your house nitakula chakula cha mchana. Yes, I'm going to have lunch in your house. Kamwambia ndio tutakula mamkuli ya mchana So he came to school and went for lunch. Akaja shuleni tukaenda kwa chakula ya mchana. And when we went to his house, nilipoenda kwa nyumba yake, I told him I am a man of God. Kamwambia mimi ni mtu wa Mungu. I can't cook. Siwezi pika. It is you who is going to cook. Ni wewe utakayepika. Shema amen. <laughs> so, but it was a plan. Lakini nilikuwa nimchoro. You have only one chair. Tulikuwa na alikuwa na kiti moja. Alikuwa na kiti kimoja tu. As you cook on that chair. Anapokuwa anaendelea kupika. I will take a sleep on your bed. Nitalala kwa kitanda chake. As I wait for the food. Napongoja kiti. So I got into the bed. Nikaenda kwa kitanda. And I prophesied to the mattress. Nikatabiria hiyo godoro. I said from today God. Nikasema kutoka leo this person doesn't get born again. 
At least today when he comes to sleep. Let him sleep from 7 o'clock. Up to 7 o'clock in the morning. So that he doesn't go to the bar again. And I promised him the bed and, and everything and everything and everything and everything. And then he told me that the food is ready. I told him, is the food ready? Yes. It is our turn. Mr. Kiyama, he was called Mr. Kiyama. Go and take a rest in the bed as I enjoy the food. You know, and I started to speak to the seat again, again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And then he's sitting, he is in the bed. Then the following morning, he came to school with a testimony. And he told me yesterday, I went to sleep early, and I did not go to the bar yesterday. I came very late. As he has when I, discovered, when I discovered this thing is working, I made sure I called Mrs. Gigi to tell her the testimony. And I tell her I shall be walking in the shift. Nikitoka kwa kiti, akitoka kwa break, kwa break wewe unakatia hiyo kiti. Na mimi saa kumi, na njioni, tunamusidikiza kwa 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 kiti. Today I want to tell you as I speak, Mr. Kiyama is a senior pastor, redeemed gospel church. Today. Basi nilipoona ya kwamba kutabiri huku kuna leta matunda nilimuhimili and through my spirit with life, prophesy to his destiny, and things will never be the same. Say amen. Look at the prophet of God says tomorrow, a time like this, Unga shall be sold for a shekel. Tomorrow, Unga shall be for a shekel. Why? By the spirit of God. Say amen. Hebu sikize unabii wa Elisha ya kwamba kesho saa kama hizi unga utauzwa kwa shekeli. Je, itawezekanaje kwa uwezo wa roho wa Bwana? When the king is saying, wakati mfalme anaposema, I will have your head. Nitakukata kichwa. The spirit of God is saying, Roho wa Bwana anasema, Tomorrow unga kesho unga shall be sold for a shekel. Utauzwa kwa shekeli. What's the difference between the two statements? Je, tofauti ya hizi kuongea kuwili ni nini? One is saying, I will have your head. Mmoja anasema nitakata kichwa chako. That one is speaking. Huyo ananena tu. The other one they says tomorrow. Huyu mwingine anasema kesho. Unga shall be sold for a shekel. Utauzwa kwa shekeli. That one is prophesying. Huyo ni unabii. Which had dominion over the other. Ni ipi ilitawala ama ilishinda mwenzake? Ah, you did you should have answered me. One was saying I will have your head. Mmoja alisema nitakata kichwa chako. The other one unga shall be sure for a shekel. Mwingine akasema kwamba unga utauzwa kwa shekeli. Two mouths have words. Vinywa viwili vinanena. One is speaking. Mwingine inanena. The other one is prophesying. Mwingine inatabiri. One is a scribe. Mmoja ni faris ni mwandishi. The other one is a, is a prophet of God. Huyu mwingine ni nabii wa Mungu. He has a spirit of God within himself. Let's go back to Joel. As we all stand up together, as, as we wind up and see, see what the Bible says. Back to Joel. This is what the Bible says. And it shall come to pass afterward, my spirit shall be upon all flesh. And I will turn, let us paraphrase, I will turn your sons and your daughters to be prophets. And your old men shall be dreamers of dreams, not ugali dreams. They shall be dreaming dreams that are proper. And your young men are going to see visions. They will not be drunkards in the church. They shall not be lazy idlers. I will turn them around when my spirit of God shall come upon them. Say amen. Kuna watu hapa wakutoka centro. Men who have been told. Give a goat and you shall become a full man. Look at the word of God what it says. When the spirit of God shall come upon your daughters. Not when they shall go to give goats. Abuja shikia. Wacha nisema swahili. Apana wataka potoa busi. Na ngombe. Dio watakuwa wanaume. Soma pare. Wakati roho apana atakuja juu. 
yao sio ati mpaka utoe damu ya roho ya mbushi na ya kondo ndio uwe mwanaume ni roho ya bwana atakapokuja juu yako wakati roho ya bwana atakuja juu yao wana wenu watakuwa na mbii nionyeshe mzee mmoja hapa alitoa mbushi mtoto wake akawa na mbii hakuna sema amen nionyeshe mmoja alitoa mbushi mtoto wake akaona maono labda aliona mauti Kenya sema amen ni nani alitoa maono mbushi akaanza kuota ndoto ya kweli aliota akikimbizwa kwenye shimo ambao halina mwisho semeni amen bwana msemi amen ya nguvu ni nani mzee alitoa mbushi akazuiliwa kupiga mke wake alimpiga zaidi usiku kwa sababu amepoa pembe za mbushi za kupiga sema amen lakini mutakapopokea roho wa bwana semeni nyuma yangu tutakapopokea roho wa bwana tutakapopokea watoto wetu watoto wetu watakuwa manabii watakuwa manabii wataona maono wataona maono na ndoto za maajabu ndoto za maajabu hapana kuona maono ya kuwa muuzaji makaa tutaia sema amen Atakuwa watu wa maono ya kuuza makaa na huirubaru na semi kuuza makaa ni mbaya lakini atayuza makaa huirubaru akiba anaona akiba mkubwa huko mbele mbele Alafu unadanganywa hapa una shida ukiuza vitu zako ukanunue mbushi Unajua kuna mwingine alikuja kunikanyangia nitoe mbushi nikamwambia acha nikuambie kwanza nimekushinda wewe umetoa busi mzee wangu mimi nilimpatia mshahara wangu wa kwanza nilipofajiriwa na TSC siku kula hata ndururu hata moja niliendea baba yangu nikamwambia baba yangu umefanya kazi mzuri ya kunifundisha mshahara huu nimepewa na baba yangu sija kula hata shilingi moja hata peni na kutolea fungu langu na wewe kama baba yangu kula yote mshahara wa pili nikampatia nusu nikamwambia mzee sasa nafikiri nimekulipa deni kama nina deni umekula nusu sema amen Baadaye nikaona haitoshi nikamchukua nikampelekea sokoni nikamwambia mzee tafuta yule ngombe unaweza kujua hii ngombe ndio mzuri akachagua ngombe alitaja bei ilitajwa bei nikamwambia mzee fikiria mara ya pili hii hapana hii ndio utachukua hata hivyo nikanena na mwenye ngombe nikamwambia mzee nipungushie shilingi elfu mbili. hiyo ngombe ilikuwa mshahara wangu wote na mapeni juu nikalipa alafu sasa Mtu huku anaanza kukuritiza hapa na busi ya shilingi elfu mbili. Sema amen. Nikamwambia sasa mimi na wewe huwe is more important. Wewe umetoa mbushi, mimi nimetoa ngombe na baada ya kutoa ngombe baba yangu akaniombea nimejaswa roho wa Bwana. Wewe umejaswa nini? Hauna chochote. Sema amen. Hebu tumpigie Bwana makofi. Baba wetu wa binguni twakupa sifa. We want to thank you this morning. Hebu tuwabe Bwana ajaze vijana wetu roho mtakatifu zaidi ya kujiobea let us pray for the young people in this church roho wa Bwana awajaze usiku na mchana begin to prophesy the spirit of God upon the youth upon the young people haya in ya hadi yao itakuwa nitamwaga roho yangu na watoto wenu watapewa maono watapewa maono na watakuwa manabii wale wazazi hapa ita watoto wako na bii fulani muite na bii fulani call your children prophets of god hata ule hajaokoka hata kama ni kahaba muite ukiwa hapo wewe ni nabii katika jina la Yesu tagasha namna hiyo hata ule ambaye hajakuja kanisani muite nabii That's the promise of God. A seed of our sons shall become prophets in the name of the Lord. Watoto wetu watakuwa manabii, manabii wa kweli, manabii wa uzima, manabii wa kuleta bii neno la Bwana katika jina la Yesu. I know kuna sauti zingine ambao zinanenwa na watu, lakini roho wa Bwana ako juu yetu. Na kwa sababu ya kujazwa roho, watoto wetu wataitwa manabii katika jina la Yesu ninakushukuru bwana mfalme wa mfalme na bwana wa mabwana tunakuita e Mungu wetu kwa sababu ya watoto wetu tunawatangaza manabii wa kike na wa kiume watogo na wakubwa tunawaita manabii wa kimataifa watatabiria michi watatabiria mataifa watatabiria nchi mbalimbali katika jina la Yesu kwa sababu wao ni manabii wa kweli katika jina la Yesu tunakushukuru Bwana tunakuinua mfalme wa mfalme na tunakubariki katika jina la Yesu amen amen katika uwepo wa roho wa Bwana 
wanaume wote njoni hapa mbele amen oh, we want to pray for all the men in the church mungu are strong nguvu za kiume na sauti ya kiume na ndoto za kiume na maono ya kiume katika jina la Yesu inweni sauti na mwambie mimi ni mwanaume bwana nisaidie katika jina la Yesu asante mfalme wa falme tunakushukuru bwana sisi ni wanaume roho wa bwana anasema akija juu yetu tutaona ndoto katika jina la Yesu tutaziona ndoto za kweli tutaziona ndoto za uzima tutaziona ndoto za neema katika jina la Yesu na tunakataa kuwa wazebe kanisani tunakataa kuwa wazebe kanisani tunakataa kuwa wazebe katika nyumba ya Bwana roho wa Bwana kija juu yetu tutakuwa waombeshi wenye ndoto na maono katika jina la Yesu bwana vijana boys where the boys hao vijana wadogo roho wa kiume bwana mnabaki huko nyuma hata nyinyi mwanaume katika jina la Yesu baba wetu wa mbinguni ninaomba mchungaji tafadhali bishop ninaelewa hali nishike shika uombe kwa niaba yako tu lakini ukishika mmoja wao ni kama wewe utakuwa ukioba ninaelewa niwe so nisikie tu mmoja nisikie mmoja mkono ni kama wewe unaomba nikiomba na wachungaji tunakushukuru bwana katika jina la Yesu asante mfalme wa falme jina lako lihimidiwe kwa sababu ya wanaume hawa neno lako linasema roho wa bwana akiwa juu ya hawa wanaume wataona ndoto katika jina la Yesu waliofinyiriwa na kugandamishwa na ulimwengu na dunia na hali ya maisha ninaenda kufunguliwa kwao katika jina la Yesu na nena kufunguliwa kwa wanaume hawa na kupewa kibali na Mungu katika jina la Yesu neema ya Bwana iwe juu yao kibali cha Bwana kiwe juu yao upako wa Bwana uwe juu ya maisha yao katika jina la Yesu wawe na maono kwa sababu ya jamii zao wawe na maono kwa sababu ya taifa wawe na maono kwa sababu ya nchi wawe na maono kwa sababu ya kanisa katika jina la Yesu Mungu ninawabariki katika jina la Yesu Bwana umegeukeni kama mke wako hapo hapa eda mbariki katika jina la Yesu na mwambie na wewe roho wa Bwana anasema wewe pia wewe utaona maono wewe ni mke mzuri uliyobarikiwa na Bwana uliyojana neema ule ambao Bwana yake hayuko tutakubariki katika jina la Yesu na wewe kama Bwana wako aenda usalimie mama yeyote na mnenene namba Bwana musalimie enerele ishi just greet her in the name of the Lord Mungu atubariki katika jina la Yesu ninakushukuru Bwana because we are blessed of the Lord in the name of Jesus I bless you in the name of the Lord bana makofi ya shangwe na vijana roho wa bana atakapo kuja juu yetu roho wa bana kija jetu okay bana awabariki manabii wa Mungu bana awabariki wahotaji wa Mungu na bana awabariki wenye maono ya Mungu amen